Let's continue hacking some smart contracts. This is the Ethernaut series where we hack into some Solidity smart contracts. We've already learned a lot about Solidity and the mistakes that can happen in the previous two videos. So let's continue that by looking into the Fallout challenge. Here we see the code of the Fallout contract. The goal of this challenge is to become the owner of this contract. So let's dig into the code. First of all, we see this Pragma Solidity line saying that the compiler version for Solidity is uh, 0.6. So that is an older version. The current um, newest version is 0.8. Then we see an import. And an import, it's going to import Open Zeppelin contracts math save math. And this is because in Solidity versions before 0.8, Math is incredibly unsafe and vulnerable to integer over or underflows. Therefore, if you want to do any addition or subtraction, it's best to import a safe math function. And that also holds true for multiplication and division, by the way. Um, but more on this safe math will come in a future video where we'll dig very deep into it. For now, just know we're using an older Solidity compiler and therefore safe math is needed. Then we define our contract and our contract has a couple of properties, uh, but first it's going to use safe math for uint256 and that is just using the safe math we talked about. Continuing, we have a mapping property, mapping addresses to uint called allocations. And then we have another property owner and this is the property where we want our address um, to be in that property. Okay, so those are the properties and now we come to this comment and this comment says constructor and then we have a function fallout it's public payable and um, this constructor uh, according to this contract is going to set the owner to the message sender and the value uh, it's going to set uh, the allocations of this owner to the value that is sent okay Continuing that, we have a modifier, only owner. Again, it's a, a modifier that's going to make sure that any function that has this modifier requires the owner to be the sender of the message. So uh, only the owner can make that call. Then we have a allocate function. It's public, it's payable. Uh, you can pay some money and that's going to be added to your allocations. We can also then uh, call the send allocation function. This is going to allow you to transfer funds from this contract to uh, the person that owns those funds. So uh, you give it an allocator and it's gonna send the funds of that allocator to that person. Uh, this is kind of a weird, uh, imp uh, this is kind of a weird way of doing it because this would allow me to send all the funds of another user to that other user. I guess that's fine, but uh, it's kind of a strange thing to have. Uh, following that, we have the collect all uh, collect allocations function and this is going to allow the owner because this uses the only owner modifier it's going to allow the owner to send all the funds in this contract to him so it's going to allow him to withdraw all allocations and lastly we have the allocator balance function which is just going to return the amount of money a person has allocated or a, an address has allocated to this contract and that's everything that we can see here now, in our last video, we used the Remix IDE to be able to test quicker without having to actually mine transactions on a testnet or a mainnet. Uh, we can use a VM here in this IDE to make things go way quicker. And we're going to do the exact same thing here. So I've created a Fallout folder. I'm going to create a new file in there and call it fallout.sol. Now we can paste the code in there. And now we have our code here in this fallout.sol file. We, I, I pressed control save and we immediately got a compilation error. And if we go to the compiler, it says uh, parser, uh, parser error, the source file requires a different compiler version because the current compiler version is set to 0.8, whereas this requires 0.6. So let's just quickly switch to a 0.6 version, compile that once again. And now, if all is well, it should work fine. Let's see if we can actually compile this. Okay, we compiled it, but now we have another error here saying it did not find open Zeppelin contracts math slash safe math. And that's because this is importing a file that we don't have in our workspace here. 
So we need to somehow import this. Now, Open Zeppelin Contracts is a GitHub repository by Open Zeppelin that you can go to. And we can actually grab the file from here. So we can go into the contracts directory here. We can go into utils and then we should find math and save math. And you can import this by just copying the URL, so the GitHub link, and pasting that instead of what is currently there. So we can paste that and save again. However, now we get another error saying that, well, again, the parser, it's a parser error saying that the compiler version is wrong. Why is that? Well, this safemat.solidity file, if we look at it, requires solidity version 0.8. And we have a project here that has Solidity version 0.6. So again, this is not the way to go. We need to actually go back in the history of this Open Zeppelin contracts um, repository and find the correct version. And to do that, we are going to go into the change log here. And this change log is very, very long. So let's just do a search for 0.6 because we need 0.6. And doing that search, we see a line saying now targeting the 0.8.x line of Solidity compilers. For 0.6, support use version 3.4.0. So, okay, version 3.4.0, that's the one we want to use. So let's go all the way back up to the main page here in this repository. Let's go into the tags and find the tag for 3.4.0, so to release 3.4.0. So now we are browsing the codes for that specific release that is built for Solidity version 0.6. In there, we can again go to scripts. No, not scripts. My apologies. We can go to contracts. In contracts, we see the math folder and the safemath.sol file. And we see here that this is built for uh, 0.6.0 uh, or any version above 0.6.0 and below 0.8. So... That's perfect for our use case. So once again, we're just going to copy that link and paste that in here. Now, if we save, we see that this file now compiles correctly. And that means that now we can finally deploy it and start playing around with it. So going to the deploy section here, we are using our VM here and we'll use this first account to deploy this file. Cool. Now we want to become the owner, so let's quickly switch to another account. So our goal is for this account to become the owner. If I go to the deployed contract here, we see that currently the owner is, wait, the owner is just all zeros. That is not really normal, right? I mean, uh, the owner should have been this first account that I used to deploy it because this constructor got called. Well, what if I tell you that this is actually not a constructor at all? The comment says it's a constructor, but that is wrong. Why is that? Well, in Solidity versions uh, 0.5 till 0.8 or 0.5 and up, constructors are defined in a totally different way. Constructors are defined as such. So you have a constructor and then you have your code. That is how constructors are built in versions uh, 0.5 and above. In versions below 0.5, constructors were built by using by having a function that has the same name as your contract. So this contract's name is fallout, and then the function name would also be fallout. So that is how it would work in a version below 0.5. Now we are using version 0.6, so this could never be a correct constructor. Um, but there's one more thing wrong here. This uh, function has a name fall one out. So like even that is wrong. Even if this compiler version was 0.4 something, it would still be a huge mistake because the function would still have the name fallout. Uh, it would still have a different name than a contract, so it would not be used as a constructor. So if we change this, this name to be fallout and save it, we will even see that we get an error. And the error says that functions are not allowed to have the same name as the contract um, because previously that was used as a constructor now not anymore, hence why in this figuration with the one here, this doesn't throw any errors, that is, this is fully allowed because the name is different from the contract's name, but it's also not being used as a constructor. And we can also see that here in our deployed contract where we have all the functions that we can execute, 
We have the allocate function, the collect allocations function, but also the fallout function. And this is not normal because the developer here expected this to just execute when deploying this contract. And when deploying this contract, well, you can easily just set the owner to the message sender. That has no security implications because uh, only a person deploying this contract is able to call that constructor. However, in this case, anybody is able to call the constructor, which means that we can just call this constructor. And now we are the owner. And that is this challenge solved in Remix. Now we just have to do the same thing in our uh, Ethernet instance. So I'm gonna open the inspector tools, go into the console, and here we can get working. So let me quickly clear the screen. Uh, and let's see, who is currently the owner of this contract? Well, let's do an await contract.owner. If all is well, then nobody should be the owner. So the owner should just be a lot of zeros. And that is correct because again, that constructor was never executed when deploying this contract. Now we can become the owner by just calling the fallout function on this. So let's do that. Let's say contract dot fallout or fall one out. And let's send, send that, uh, make that call to that function. If we do that, obviously MetaMask is going to pop up and we need to accept that transaction. So confirm the transaction. It's going to send a tr transaction I'll, and I'll be back with you when it has been mined. And okay, perfect. The transaction has now been mined. So let's see who is currently the owner of this contract. And we notice that that is us. So if I type player, we see that we are currently the owner of this contract. And that means that we have solved this challenge. So this kind of showed a really old way uh, or a very simple way that was used a lot in the past where a silly little mistake such as uh, having a wrong name for your constructor can cause you to lose a lot of funds. Now you may say, well, this will never happen in the wild. Well, it has happened in the wild. And that's the story of a company named Rubixi. And Rubixi was a very famous case because uh, they were previously called dynamic pyramids and they wanted to change their name to Rubixi. So in all of their contracts, uh, they had their name. So uh, they had a couple of contracts with the name dynamic pyramids and they wanted to rename all of them to, Perix, uh, to Rubixi. However, they forgot to change the constructor's name. So the constructor function was still called dynamic pyramid, whereas the contract was renamed to Rubixi, which caused anybody to be able to call their constructor, which wasn't an actual constructor anymore, and take over that contract, which is obviously a very big issue. They were able to steal all the funds. So this is kind of a little bit of history. Back in earlier versions, this was a mistake that could be made. Uh, Solidity obviously changed and now the constructor keyword is way better because through that keyword you explicitly say, hey, this is a constructor and a typo there uh, will just cause a compiler error instead of being allowed and potentially causing a lot of issues. But that has been it for this video. So in this video, we learned a lot of new things and I hope you enjoyed that. I have been loving making this series and I want to make more of these videos and that's only possible if we get your support. So if you like this video, don't forget to leave a like, like this video, leave a comment if you enjoyed it as well, um, say some nice words, ask some questions. I'm always happy to answer some questions in the comments and subscribe if you don't want to miss any future videos. But that has been it for me. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care.